I just hope people look around like we're doing right now and take a deep breath and realize why you're here. What freedoms you have and then look around at this place we're in now. Every one of these are soldiers that have passed away. That's, they're the reasons you're here. Uh, my kids love stopping and talking to the vets out selling the poppies. We've been talking about poppies and about vets a lot this past week, and we'll continue right up until Remembrance Day and keep them in our hearts throughout the year. There are some great stories out there, and our own Lisa Morazic went and spoke with one vet, George Orton, to get his story. These are all legion. George Orton proudly shows the awards he has earned throughout his accomplished 92 years. He served his country in World War II and has been serving his community ever since. As an active volunteer with the Royal Canadian Legion in Regina for the past 51 years, he has spent most of his life giving his time, his dedication, his compassion, and so much more. Possibly we, we learned something through the war that, that we wanted to help. There's some do a lot more than I do, but uh, I do as much as I can. George suffered a stroke late last month and spent five days here at the Pasqua Hospital in Regina. He is back at home now, but says he needs to take it easy. So this will be the first time in 51 years that George won't be out in the community collecting donations for poppies. But that doesn't mean he is going to let a stroke stop him from taking part in the poppy campaign altogether. Yeah, I still plan on helping, but... I think mostly for maybe helping a bit on the county and the money. George is also continuing his bi-weekly visits to the veterans, staying at the Wascana Rehabilitation Centre in Regina, just as he has been doing for the past 28 years. Legion President Terry Duncan says even though George and many of the other Legion volunteers are getting older, that hasn't stopped them from doing what they love. They can't keep up the volunteerism as they have been doing, but they're still actively involved. You can't you can't even get them away. They want to help so bad. As Remembrance Day nears, George says it's important for people to donate to the Poppy campaign because the proceeds help so many veterans and families in need. Throughout his years volunteering with the campaign, he said he was always encouraged by the support from young people. It's surprising how many young people come up and thank you and buy poppies. People should give to help keep the Legion active in uh, what they are doing for the people. At this time of year, he hopes everyone takes a moment to reflect on the sacrifices made by so many. Well, I'd like to um, think about uh, the people who lost their lives for trying to help out the country. You had to have more people than just fought in the war. So you had to have office people in that. It takes a lot of people. Many would describe his service for the country and his many years of volunteer work as extraordinary. But he doesn't see it that way. Just an ordinary person trying to help out as much as he can. Reporting in Regina, I'm Lisa Morozik with Sun News Network. I think Mr. Orton is pretty extraordinary. You see that rack of medals on his chest? You don't get those for hanging out in the mess hall. Lisa Morazic joins us now from Regina. Uh, Lisa, a great story that you brought forward there of, of uh, maybe in some ways he is just an ordinary Canadian, but you stepped up and he did great things. I want to ask you about uh, the money, that the, because he talked about the money that the Pompey campaign raises. Where does this money go? Okay, Brian. Well, these are some of the little cards that uh, Terry Duncan, who you also heard from in my story, actually passes out at this time of year just to give people an idea as to where all of this money goes and where all of their proceeds goes. So I believe we have a graphic we can put up right now. Um, so the funds are used uh, to assist in to assist ex-service personnel and their dependents. They're used uh, for low rental housing and care facilities for elderly or disabled persons and also their dependents, uh, community medical appliances and medical research, drop 
drop-in centres, meals on wheels, transportation and related services and then of course it will help pay for the poppies, the wreaths and the supplies all around Remembrance Day and I believe it does vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. I know in Saskatchewan there are a lot of proceeds that go to the Wascana Rehabilitation Centre where yeah. there are a lot of uh, I believe over 50 disabled veterans who currently reside there and I know in Calgary they you know their funds go to different things as well you know yeah um, we've got the, the different pieces, hospitals yeah. across the country at Pearly Rideau here in Ottawa mm -hmm. uh, it, it's uh, it's an incredible campaign and in it it's heartbreaking to see the people that uh, you know do the stupid things like rob it we've seen uh, stories across the country like that but the good works I think far outshine the negative publicity that they outshine the uh, the idiots that are, are stealing from these boxes yeah, exactly. And I mean, I, I haven't actually got a chance to speak with some of the veterans here about the white poppy campaign that we've seen. But I mean, I know, you know, we've seen stories across the country, as you mentioned, people are pretty disgusted by it. I'm, of course, one of them. It's absolutely heartbreaking to see this sort of thing. I know a lot of the students in Ottawa who are pushing for this campaign are saying that, you know, where are the white poppies? Because it shows that you are against the glorification of war. Well, when you sit down with these veterans, the people who gave, you know, almost the, you know, of course, there were many of them who gave the ultimate sacrifice. These men gave plenty of sacrifice, and they're well, you know, the probably prime of their years. This nightmare. The prime of yeah, their years. Exactly. I understand you they... spoke to one of them. Yeah, he was 16 at the time when he went overseas. 16 years old. I can't even imagine what I was doing when I was 16. It was definitely not fighting for my country. So, yeah, it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking to see some of these things. When really, Remembrance Day should be all about their courage and their bravery. That's the spotlight. That's the focus of Remembrance Day is the sacrifice that they all made. And even if they didn't pay for it with their lives, they definitely are living with it now. And like, you know, like I said, they're probably living a lot of these nightmares still to this day. I understand you spoke with one gentleman about the idea uh, that put forward by the white poppy uh, people about the, the glorification of war and winning wars. Uh, tell me about this gentleman and, uh, and what he had to say. Yeah, Harold Haig is one of the other veterans who I spoke to who's also a longtime member of the Royal Canadian Legion here in Regina. He's been a member for more than 60 years. Now, we were talking a little bit about, you know, the importance of Remembrance Day, what Remembrance Day really means to him, what he hopes people really think about on this day. And he talked a lot about the sacrifice. He said Remembrance Day is all about remembering the men and the women who fought overseas and also the men and women who, you know, just gave up their time and, and all the families who, you know, were thinking about their loved ones overseas. Now I believe we have a clip from him as well talking a little bit more about this. They all had wives and children. They loved their family. Hey, what's wrong with this world, you know? So wars, wars are, are they're not the, nobody wins a war. Uh, well, no, there's, uh, there's loss on every side, absolutely. Lisa, thanks so much for, for yeah. taking the time speaking to these uh, gentlemen and uh, bringing their story to the Byline audience. Thanks so much. No, you're very welcome. All right.